What's up YouTube and welcome back to another episode of Homebrew Subaru. In this episode I'm going to try and show you how to set up your throttle position sensor properly. So what's up everyone? Uh, I have been driving the 240 daily and uh, it's been driving really well. I've been driving it to work, to the store, wherever I need to go. But it seems to have a kind of a breakdown in the amount of throttle I give. So sometimes on shifts as I let off the throttle and then I go to give it throttle again, I almost get fuel cut at the bottom of acceleration. So I'm starting to think that the throttle position sensor isn't set up properly in the car and from what I've noticed looking at it, it, it is an adjustable sensor so it's got little slots in it so you can actually twist the sensor and give it a different reading and it seems to be turned all the way one way. Now I'm sure the previous owner or someone at some point did that, uh, generally they kind of sit somewhere in the center. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is look up the specs for the sensor, I'm going to show you how to check it out and then we'll perform an adjustment and see if it changes anything. So here on the RB20, your throttle position is right here and it also has some type of idle switch which is a three wire switch um, but we're looking for the second part of the TPS circuit uh, which is on a little harness right here and it's basically a three wire connector that connects to there and I kind of need to check the circuit because I'm not sure exactly what's what. Um, like my di wiring diagram doesn't really show me. So just looking at the wiring colors that are actually on the TPS sensor, we've got a black, white, and pink wire. I would assume the black wire is more than likely the ground. The white wire would be the signal return going back to the ECU. And the pink wire should be our 5 volt reference. So I'm going to do some little bit of wiring checks and then uh, then we can actually check to see where the TPS is sitting at rest. Okay so I've got this kind of set up I think I can start checking it. I've got a back probe into the circuit of that middle wire which I believe is the signal return and I have my meter set to voltage the ground circuit hooked up to ground we can just verify that we have some battery power uh, so I do have the battery on charge right now. We're showing 13.34 volts, so good battery voltage. The key is on and the ECU is powered up. Now as I put, touch the probe to that circuit, I'm getting a little bit of, of strange reading of 358 millivolts. Uh, but that basically, if we, if we go by millivolts and move the decimal point over, that's about 0.35 volts, which is too low. Uh, we were we are looking for about 0.46 volts. As you open up the throttle, you can start to see the change, and we get to 1.2, 1 1.5, 2 volts, 2.5, 3 volts, and at a completely open throttle, we're almost hitting that 4 volt mark. There it is. There. So at idle, we're not producing enough voltage out of the sensor to tell the ECU that we're at idle. So this sensor does need to, an adjustment to get this number to about 46 something instead of the 35 something. Now the bolt, the little bolts holding this sensor they seem to be seven millimeter. And just giving them a little loosen should be enough to get the sensor to turn. I believe I need to tilt the sensor down. We're getting a reading change. So there, we've gone a little bit too far. We're at 0.58. We're looking for 0 0.46. 0 0.48. That's very close. It's a little bit too far. I'll just squeak it up a little bit. 
It's actually just by putting the weight of your hand on it almost. And bang, we're going to leave it right there. So now I can lock down those screws. I'm getting a little fluctuation out of it, but that could be our charging voltage as well and uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna try and lock this thing down now and even just tightening it up changed it ever so slightly now that there's a little bit better idle reading just want to make sure that the wide open throttle reading is about the same And we're hitting just over four volts which should be acceptable and we've returned back to 0.46 approximately so the TPS voltage and calibration is properly set up now so as you can see it's a very easy procedure and as long as you have the proper information you'll be able to do it um, something that can throw off your reading is a low battery of course uh, but getting your back probe pin into the connector you need to ensure that you're touching the actual circuit for the back probe pin to be able to give you a signal uh, the way i do that is i usually back probe a, a connector and then i'll take my ohm meter or just a something that can even just detect uh, continuity on the back side on that pin and then on the other side of the actual terminal inside the connector if you get a beep or resistance you've got a connection and now you can start your testing if you don't get that connection it'll throw you off it'll give you bad readings and you'll just be scratching your head when what's going on so the majority of older japanese cars are set up this way um, most of them do have an adjustable uh, tps sensor just because of where on the actual throttle and the throttle plate can change its position a little bit it allows a technician to come in later on a vehicle with worn components to readjust the signal to make it a little bit better. Uh, I think someone actually just played with this thing or I don't know why it was adjusted all the way over. Um, and I don't know 100% if my idle is 100 is currently set 100% yet. So there's always could be a little bit further issue. But when you're going to test these, whether it's Nissan, Subaru, uh, I'm pretty sure the old Honda sensors were the same way. They're, they all get checked the exact same way. As long as you learn how to check a TPS sensor on one vehicle, you can more than likely check it on another. So now that I've got this all set up, I think I'm going to go for a quick little drive just to kind of give you my feelings on whether it changed or not and uh, probably get a bite to eat at the same time. So I will be back to finish up this video. I would like to get out and work on the BMW, but it has been raining like crazy here. Uh, I live in pretty much the rainiest place of all of Canada and this summer we broke the record from 1969 uh, so rainfall here has been like just every single day it's raining hard right now uh, so yeah to go out and, and you know work on the car is not a big deal but I just prefer it to be a a, a day that's not raining so hard <laughs> so I did just get back from a drive um, I've noticed a few things have changed certainly um, first thing is the idle is now too high and I think because uh, the car was constantly stalling before and I did adjust the idle screw to open up the throttle just a little bit um, now with the TPS set properly the plate is probably a little bit too open um, so I don't have a tack so I'm kind of guessing that the the idle RPM is probably about 1200 right now maybe a little bit higher um, so I think I'm going to probably have to adjust the throttle plate closed a little bit more and then when I do that I may have to readjust the TPS again but I've also noticed that my stalling issue seems to be gone so it very well could be related to the TPS after I get it all dialed in I'll have to do uh, a couple runs with the car make sure it's good and hot and then uh, just see if the stalling issue comes up again if it does or if I cannot correct the idle, um, there may be some type of vacuum leak. But at least I made some changes, I made some progress, and you guys got to see how to set up a TPS sensor.
If you like this video, definitely give it a thumbs up. And if you're new here and you haven't already, please consider hitting that subscribe button for me. Leave your questions and comments further down below. And I will see you in the next one.